Hi, this is Brendan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and today I'm going to be doing another movie review. Uh, this is The Jade Raksha. Uh, it was a 1968 Shaw Brothers release. It stars Cheng Pei Pei and was directed by Ho Meng Hua. It also stars Ku Feng. And this movie I've been wanting to review for a very long time. This was a... a I really love Cheng Pei Pei movies. I think she's incredible. I... I I love her swordplay. I I I, lo I I like the way that she uh, that she moves uh, in fight scenes, and this was a film that I had a hard time getting. So I had to get it. As you can see, this is not a DVD. This is a um, a VCD. So I had to get it in VCD format. I don't normally do that, and I noticed that this one was a little bit pixelated. So that might have I don't know. It kind of affected a little bit of my enjoyment of the film, but. Um, but I still think I was able to see enough of it that I got, you know, I got the, um, the uh, sort of complete impression of it. Uh, with VCDs, you kind of have to switch uh, midway through to it. Comes with two discs, so the first one is like 45 or 50 minutes, and then the rest of it's on the second disc. So that's a little bit annoying. This uh, was also a little bit expensive. I don't normally review films that I think people will have a hard time getting, but again, this is the Jade Raksha. I, I think it's um, you know is one that I really have wanted to review for a long time, one I've really wanted to see, and it's uh, I think it's kind of important too. So I thought I'd uh, I'd, I'd talk about it. Uh, if you if if you really want to see it, um, you you might still be able to get it on VCD, but otherwise you can probably find some really great recaps of it online. I don't really focus on the recaps so much. the The basic storyline is Chang Pei Pei plays the Jade Raksha whose family was wiped out by a member of the Yang clan, uh, sorry, Yan clan, and she doesn't know which Yan did it, so she decides to just go and kill all of the 18 brothers of the Yan clan. She's just wandering around China, killing them, and she meets an another swordsman named Zhu, who's also on his own path of revenge, and they sort of have an interesting relationship over the course of the film. There's a bit of a love triangle, and then the movie culminates in a, uh, in a big fight scene with, uh, with with the yang the, sorry the yan who ultimately did it and and uh and and so you know they both go on their own sort of two separate paths and 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 it's kind of interesting the way that uh you know she has her course and uh, Zhu has his course and his course ultimately leads to sort of a maybe a more compassionate direction and hers is a little more ruthless and uh you know hellbent so so as i don't know I, I thought it was a very fun film i really enjoyed it uh what really surprised me was, you know, again, I, I'm one of these people that I kind of watch these mainly for the fight scenes. That's just kind of my primary reason for being there. But I also like the story. And the story really got me here. Something about the the the, the two heroes who, who are both bent on revenge but have very different philosophies about it. And and and, and just the, the way that all of the different uh, grudge and revenge elements tied together in the end. There's, I don't want to spoil anything, um, just in case somebody does want to watch it. But you know, there, you know, you have all these different events that seem disconnected, and and I won't say how they tie together, but everything ties together nicely, and and it's uh, um, and and again, it's it's just a I think a, a really a really engaging uh, revenge plot. And the love story elements really work too. There's, uh, you really care about all the different characters, and you know, there's, there's, you know, there's, in addition to sort of the swordsman characters, there's, there's Zhu's mother, uh, there's a young, uh, a young uh, singing woman and her and her blind father, and then there's the the head of the of the of the sort of evil branch of the Yans, and uh, and and but you you're really interested in all of them. Um, I was I was very. Uh, I, w I was very uh, surprised by how like you know how interesting I found the mother, how interesting I found the the the, the blind man, uh, you know, and Zhu, even though he's kind of a little bit of a, a little bit uptight about about uh, about you know rules and etiquette, he's he's still a very interesting character. And the villain in this, uh, you know, uh, Jan was 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 great. Uh, I, I loved it. You know, he has this sort of thing where he knows the Jade Raksha is after him, and uh, you know, one of one of the ways that he he, he sort of protects himself is he's very generous to the local population. So he's sort of known as a charitable philanthropist and that really helped shield him from her initially. So I thought it was, thought it was, you know, uh, you know, sort of a, a nice, uh, uh, and it, you know, it was it wasn't that he, that he was a hypocrite. It's that he was just using. I think he was just using it very strategically. He was sort of, you know, this was sort of his tactic for, uh, 
uh, for shielding him from you know the prying eyes of, of righteous heroes and law enforcement. And so I, I thought it was well done. But uh, but yeah, so I, I I really enjoyed it. The fight scenes were great. Um, I've seen you know again. Th- I, this was directed by the same person who did Lady Hermit. I think the Lady Hermit fight scenes are a little bit better, but this is in the same ballpark, especially the scenes where Cheng Pei Pei is involved. And if you haven't seen her, she used to be a dancer, so that really I think is brought into it well. Like she, she, she the, whenever I tell people about Cheng Pei Pei, I say pay attention to her footwork. Um, that's I think that's a big part of of why it works. This isn't you know like eighties or nineties wuxia. This is Wuxia that's maybe a, a little bit more on the swashbuckle side because they're doing sort of wider shots and they haven't quite got all the, um, you know, by the 80s and 90s, there's all these sort of edit cuts that people are doing and and the stunt work has, uh, you know, like you have like sort of the rise of Jackie Chan and all this stuff. And so the stunt work is just on a, on a, on a much more uh, aggressive and intense level. But but the sword play here is is, is a little more old school. Uh, but it's I, I love this stuff. I think the I, I really like the swashbuck like you because it requires a lot of athleticism to do. It's not um, and you can see the mistakes like uh, when uh, you know if, if the actor gets a little bit tired in the course of uh, you know of, you know sort of twirling and swinging the sword, you can tell if they miss a step, you can tell it's very visible. I mean obviously you know they're 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 only showing the footage that that, that they think was good, but it's longer. It, it seems to to my mind that these movies are slightly longer cuts of, of each sequence. So you just get a, uh, for me, I think, I feel like it's a, um, uh, I like, I like getting that. I like the new school. I like the, I like the, you know, the older, the older stuff. Uh, I think, I think they all kind of bring different things to the table, but, um, but, but for me, uh, you know, I, I enjoy like a Chang Pei Pei movie as much as say like, um, you know, something with Michelle Yeoh in it or Donnie Yen. Um, I, I just I just think it's uh, to me it's on equal footing with that even if these are older movies and and, and again I I usually emphasize that because I've, I've recommended older martial arts movies to people in the past and then there's some somewhat was surprised when they I'm talking about it make them sound so exciting and they go to watch it and, and maybe the pacing is different from what they're accustomed to the uh, the focus is a little bit different than what they're accustomed to so I just somewhat like to prepare people for you know this isn't the same thing as sitting down to watch a film that was made yesterday or in the 90s uh, but this is a really good movie this is um it's atmospheric it's uh you know it opens up almost like a ghost story she uh the jade rock she appears and she starts uh singing this song to her enemies that basically says i'm going to kill you uh for the you know for 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 slaughtering my family um and i thought i i, li- I really like that setup. Uh, I like I liked the character of Jade Raksha. I liked, uh, you know, as always, I like Cheng Pei Pei's performance, and and again, the whole cast is great. And and this is is a very uh, is a very it's a very well crafted story, uh, and and it, and it definitely holds your interest. And there's a moment early on in the film. I, I mean, I'm going to spoil a little detail, but I think it's important because I thought this was one of the more striking scenes in the in the film. Uh, so don't listen to it if you don't want to know. And it's I'm not spoiling the ending, just like a little beat in the movie. But the the swordsman Zhu, when he goes to to so early on he meets Jade Raksha, and they sort of have a have a moment at a tavern. You know, that involves uh, you know fighting with some locals and then uh, you know a bunch of dialogue, and then they part ways to 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 go on their their different respective revenge quests. And he goes to a village to find the man who kills his father. And he, and, he, and he asks, you know, like, does so-and-so live here? And someone says, oh, yeah, sure, right down that way. So he, go, he goes and he finds the man and, he, and he, he goes to the address and he says, uh, you, you know, you so-and-so. And the guy, and then I think the guy says yes or gets mad at him. And he, uh, and he draws his sword and then they fight. And, it turn, and he kills the guy. And then it turns out after somebody comes up and says, wait, you wanted to kill, you know, so-and-so? No, no, this is some other guy, uh, you know, who just has a really similar sounding name. And, you know, you've done something, you, you know, you, how could you be so reckless? And, uh, and then, the, and then Zhu feels really horrible. He ties a blue, like he takes a strip of fabric from the guy that he's killed and ties it around his sword and vows not to kill again. So it's just, I just thought that was a really interesting setup. And also, you know, the way that the scene was shot, there's, you know, Zhu stabs the guy and then, you know, right after he stabs him, something just doesn't feel right. Cause the wife and child run out and Zhu is sort of standing there heroically, like he's just you know, uh, you know, uh, honored his father's death, but everybody in the, in the area is just like, not it, the tone of what Jew is doing and what the people are doing is just so mismatched. 
And I thought that really worked. It was a very, it was a very powerful sequence for me. It was almost like a little bit humorous, but still, uh, still very effective. So, you know, a lot of, I thought there were a lot of scenes like that in this film, and that's one of the reasons why I liked it. So, so again, this is a, a tough one to get. It's the Jade Raksha. I think it was 1968. It's a Ho Meng Hua film and uh, stars Chang Pei Pei. And I really do recommend it. I'm hoping that maybe they'll, like sometimes they reissue these things and they become easier to get again. But this is one, I think I had to pay about 60 bucks for it. And I don't normally like to do that. And I don't normally suggest other people do that. I'm not, I don't consider myself a collector. I consider myself a fan. So I like to spend, you know, 13 bucks on a movie, 20 bucks on a movie. Um, if it's one I really want like this, I'll spend a little extra. Uh, so I'm going to try to look online and see if I can find other ways for people to find this film, but I don't, I just don't think that it's, I think you're going to have to plunk down money if you want it. So, uh, so again, I, I, I liked it. Um, I don't want to recommend it to people because it's so expensive. Um, but, but I did, I did really enjoy the film and I'm, I'm really hoping they come out with a, uh, with a reissued version also because I had to watch it pixelated and as, as, uh, as willing as I was to do that, I really would have preferred it uh, to not be pixelated like that. It, you know, I, I would like to see it clear. Um, and I think the reason, I don't know if it was this individual disc or that it's a, a VCD. My, both my Blu-ray and my VCD player can play this. And it looked the same on both of them. Um, and, and it didn't look that way during the preview. So I think it's just something to do with, you know. And this is not like a bootleg or anything as far as I know. So... Uh, so anyways, I will, uh, I will let you go and I should be online with some gaming discussion and I'll hopefully have my, uh, the rest of the Temple of the Red Lotus films, uh, reviewed during the week. And until then, I'll talk to you later.